Bonjour à tous and welcome to French for a Day. This is my little corner on YouTube where every Saturday I'm sharing with you my French beauty secrets. Today we're talking about beauty and fashion mistakes that make us look older and how to correct them the French way. Before I start sharing with you my tips, I have a little disclaimer to make. This video is not intended to shame or to blame anyone. It's not intended to tell you that you're doing things wrong and I'm doing them the right way, so you should follow my tips. These are not rules, I'm sharing with you my tips. And to the best of my knowledge, there is, there is no makeup or fashion legislation, so you can break the law here. So the most important thing is for you to experiment and find your own style, find the makeup and the fashion style that you feel comfortable with. And that's why I would like to invite all of you to join me in the comment section below and share with me your tips. This video is intended to share our experiences and to support each other. I'm 36 years old now and I find that my style has changed over the years. My makeup application has changed over the years. It's not the same as I was in my 20s and I also had the pleasure to observe the way my mom was doing her makeup and the way she was changing her makeup application over the years and her fashion style over the years. She was changing a lot of things. I would like to dedicate this video to her now. She was going to be in her 70s and I'm sure that she would have loved to join me in this video and it would have been amazing if I could do her makeup for this video. But anyways, still, this video is dedicated to my mom that passed away years ago. And um, aging is a beautiful process. We gain a lot more experience with age and we become wiser. We have so many beautiful memories and those memories show on our faces, they show on our bodies as well, everything changes. So I'm going to divide this video into two different parts. The first part is going to be the makeup application and the second part is going to be my fashion tips. And one last disclaimer, I promise it's the last one and we're starting with the tips. All of my French beauty secrets videos are intended for all ages and all of the makeup looks that you're going to see there are going to be suitable for all ages, over 60, over 70, because my French Beauty Secrets series are dedicated to celebrating our own natural beauty and enhancing what we already have. So if you want to try any of the looks from these series, I would be very happy if you send me some feedback, if you write a comment, if you tell me if these makeup looks work for you, because I'm confident that they're going to work for all ages. I'm going to start with two very general tips and the first one is going to be as we age, start to prioritize skincare over makeup. Spend a little bit more time, money and research on skincare and create a consistent and good skincare routine for yourself. That is going to work for your skin needs. Mature skin is not a skin type. People in their 70s can still have oily skin and people in their early 20s can have dry skin. So be sure to choose carefully the skincare products so that they are going to work for your skin type. Don't follow what other people are saying, just experiment for yourself. Think what your skin needs and just know that there is no mature skin. You can have normal skin, dry skin, oily skin, combination skin, but there is no really, not really such skin type such as mature skin. So be sure to choose your skincare products carefully because more skincare and less makeup is the key to looking younger and preserving your skin and looking natural naturally beautiful. And then the second general tip that I want to give you is when you're looking, when you're watching at YouTube tutorials or when you're watching tutorials from, from makeup artists, think and do not try to recreate the look step by step because usually these tutorials are filmed with studio lights with a very good lighting and usually during these tutorials the makeup artists and the beauty content creators use a lot of products that you don't need in your daily life. They're going to use so many different layers on the skin starting with the primer, then the foundation, concealer, powder, baking, all of the, this, these things, you don't need them in your real life and they're going to aid you. I'm going to get in detail in a minute, but just wanted to make this clear because there are a lot of makeup artists that I love, respect, and I love their work. However, very often when I watch their makeup tutorials, I think to myself, well, you know, with studio lights, this looks quite impressive, but in real life, this is going to look horrible in like 30 minutes or so. So 
Just keep that in mind. If something doesn't work on you and you're recreating a makeup tutorial from your favorite beauty content creator, it's not your fault. It's just that you don't have the studio lights and probably there are some filters added. So in my French Beauty Secret series, I want us to celebrate natural beauty and all of the makeup looks that I'm going to create and that I create in this series are suitable for everyday use and they are suitable for all ages. So if you want to check those out, I'm going to have links in the description box. Okay, now I'm starting with the more precise tips. And the tip number one is wearing too much makeup is going to make you look older. So be sure to wear a foundation that is going to allow your skin to show through. There is nothing wrong with showing your skin, showing a few freckles, um, showing some sunspots. We are not perfect, we are all humans, but if you use a light layer of foundation, trust me, it's going to last you much longer and it's going to look more beautiful in real life, in natural life. There are a few foundations that I like and that I think are making the whole complexion look more youthful and more beautiful and the, the, they don't emphasize fine lines, pores, and I'm going to make sure to list them in the description box below. However, these foundations are more on the pricey side, so if you know of affordable options, be sure to leave me a comment. And you have to trust me on that, not everyone needs a full face of foundation. You don't have to apply the foundation all over your face and cover everything. One of the tips that I want to give you is choose the right shade foundation. Very often I see people with a shade darker. I always want to be a shade darker in foundations, but if you go a shade darker, it's going to age you. It's going to make you look older than you are. So be sure to match your foundation shade and make sure to do this in natural light because when you go in store the lights in store make everything look a little bit different and then when you go home you see the color and it doesn't really match your skin tone so make sure when you're swatching foundations in store just make sure to go outside outside of the store to see the actual colors carry a little mirror with yourself and just apply the foundation right here on your face to see how it's going to match your face. Also consider your neck. For some people, the neck is going to be a little bit paler, so you have to match the neck with your face. The next tip that I have is going to be about concealer, applying too much concealer. The famous triangles that were like, I believe that this was a huge trend at some point on YouTube and everyone was doing these triangles. Then right now I see on TikTok that we have the other thing, the round glasses. So some people are drawing glasses and like that's the way to apply concealer. I don't think so. Take a closer look at your under eye area. Concealer is to conceal any darkness that you might have, but if you choose the wrong shade concealer, it's going to make things worse. And sometimes you can't use the same concealer under the eyes and on the face. On the face, if you have some blemishes, you're going to need a little bit thicker concealer, which you cannot use under the eyes. For the under eye area, I would say go for a concealer that has light medium coverage or use a color corrector if you have a lot of darkness under the eyes. With concealer a little goes a long way. If you have a lot of darkness under the eyes probably your best bet is going to be a concealer with a peachy color that is going to counteract the darkness and that is going to lift that shadow and lift the darkness. But I've seen people very often choosing a very very light shade concealer and it literally looks like a raccoon. <laughs> Um, it just shows. Where you apply the concealer, it shows and it doesn't blend seamlessly. And most people are not going to need concealer here. Now there is a thing, I've seen a lot of women in their 70s in France that don't wear a tiniest bit of concealer just because they don't need it. So with concealer, if you don't need it, don't use it. Moving on to the next tip, and this is applying too much powder and baking. The so-called baking, I don't know who made this up, but that was such a huge trend and I admit that even I have tried it. I usually don't follow trends. I 
mm, almost never follow trends. But I remember that it became such a huge trend that once I've tried it, I was still in my 20s and it looked horrible. I couldn't believe why it looks so bad on me. And I was thinking, well, I'm doing something wrong. I didn't have a YouTube channel back then. Baking looks absolutely spectacular on camera. Camera loves heavy makeup but in real life, things are different. So baking is basically when you put a good amount of powder with a beauty blender, let it sit for a little while and then, you know, brush it, brush the excess off. It looks bad, trust me. In real life, this looks bad. And even on the YouTubers that are doing this, trust me, in 30 minutes, it looks horrible. But then sitting on camera, yeah, it looks good. Especially if you add a filter, it's gonna look good with the studio lights and with everything. But try to avoid adding too much powder. I used to have very oily skin in my 20s and I would only use sunscreen and powder. I would never use foundation or concealer and it looked absolutely gorgeous. But as I reached my mid 30s, I barely use any powder right here just because it makes my skin look dry and lifeless. And powder is usually going to stick into all of those fine lines. It's sometimes going to emphasize pores. I'm going to write that down again, my favorite powders that I think look beautiful. And the way I like to apply powder is I like to use a damp beauty blender. I find that loose powders work best to conceal pores, which we start to have as we age. We pores somehow start to be a little bit more visible than we might have some fine lines that we want to conceal. And anyways, the, this powder that, that I have, don't buy this one. I don't recommend this one. This is just the only one that I have right now um, around my desk. But anyways, it's a, it's a loose powder and it's gonna work. It's just uncomfortable to take it out. That's why I don't recommend it. Other than that, it's a nice powder. So I like to take the Beauty Blender, then take some of the loose powder. This one is messy. And you can see the powder that I have on the Beauty Blender now. I'm going to take this one on the back of my hand. I'm seriously going to tap on the back of my hand so that I can take all the excess powder. And then from what's left after tapping on my hand, just going to tap on the places where I want to apply the powder. And I'm going to repeat this one until I get the desired result. And this is what is going to erase pores. It's not going to make you look powdery and you're not going to have a lot of powder on the face. So this is my application technique that works almost for everyone. Let me know if it works for you as well. Next, we're moving on to blush and bronzer. I don't and would not recommend contouring if you want to look younger. When we are younger, the face is usually going to be more round, more plump. The cheeks are usually going to be a little bit more plump. And as we get older, the face usually elongates a little bit. So it's going to become naturally a little bit longer and the cheeks are not going to be as plump. So we want to reverse that with makeup. And the way you do that, the easiest way to look younger when you're applying a blush for most people, I would say even skip the bronzer. If you don't need it, just don't use the bronzer. Use only blush. First of all, don't use a um, huge brush. Depending on the perimeter of your face, use a brush that is going to suit your face. If you use, let's say if you use a big brush like this one, you're not going to be able to apply the blush precisely where you want it to be. And you want to use the blush to lift your face and to sculpt your face. So start applying the blush right here, like in the middle of the cheek where your iris is and upwards. That's how you like to apply the blush and it's going to lift the face. If you're using a big brush like this one or a brush that is going to be big for your face, you might end up applying the blush down here and it's going to drag your face as opposed to lifting everything. So the whole idea here is to lift the face. Moving on to eyes and eyebrows. For eyebrows, try to follow the natural shape of your eyebrows. It all depends how much you pluck your eyebrows, but try to keep them as natural as possible and don't overdo them. Don't do this very perfect Instagrammable brows because these are going to make you look older in real life and they don't look good 
unless it's on Instagram with a filter. It just looks very artificial, it doesn't look natural. And with the eyes, same principle applies about less is more. I think that as we age, we need less makeup on the eyes. And certain eyeshadows can emphasize fine lines on the eyes and can emphasize the aging eyelids. A lot of people think that as they age, they can't use shimmery eyeshadows. I beg to differ. I think that satin finish eyeshadows look absolutely gorgeous on aging eyelids and as we get older we shouldn't go for entirely matte look because it's not going to I don't think that a whole matte look is going to look good I think that if there is a little bit of shimmer but this kind of a very light sophisticated shimmer and sheen this kind of a satin finish is going to look a lot more youthful and it's not going to emphasize fine lines trust me on that if it's an elegant shimmer like the shimmer let's say of Tissé Rivoli by Chanel like Nude Dip by Tom Ford they look absolutely stunning on the eyelids and they are going to make you look a lot younger than if you create a whole matte look you need a little bit of life in your makeup and don't use too many colors. I think that the key here with the eyes, again, is less is more. A lot of people are going to say, stay away from eyeliner as you age, as you reach the age of 40, stay away of, from eyeliner. I think that eyeliner looks absolutely gorgeous on, with all ages. It's just that you have to choose the right shade eyeliner. Even if you're in your 20s and you choose the incorrect eyeliner, it's going to make you look older than you are. So if you have very dark hair like mine, you can afford to have a black eyeliner on the upper lash line. I would say that I prefer coal eyeliners because they are more forgiving to the eyelids. It's very easy to get into in between the lashes and they're going to make the lashes appear thicker. However, if you have blonde hair, if you're paler than me, black eyeliner might age you and it's not going to look good. So choose something that is a little bit lighter, choose something, a shade of brown or gray. These colors are going to look beautiful. Taupe also looks absolutely gorgeous on blondes. And if you want to line your lower lash line, definitely use a little bit of powder, brown powder. Even if you have dark hair like mine, usually lining the lower lash line with a dark eyeliner doesn't look good. It, it's going to age you in real life. It looks good on editorials. However, in real life, it is going to age you. Next thing, make sure to use mascara. Now with the mascara, I would say again, if you have dark hair like mine, black mascara is probably going to be your best bet, but try to experiment a little bit. On some people, brown mascara looks very beautiful, especially on blondes. I think that colorful mascaras are going to look beautiful. A tip from me is just avoid applying mascara on the bottom lashes, or if you absolutely want to apply mascara on the bottom lashes, make sure to use a waterproof mascara because sometimes it's going to smudge and it's going to make you appear as if you have dark circles, which doesn't look good. And then one last tip that I have for eyes, try to avoid applying a highlighter on the brow bone, shimmery highlighter. It always makes you look older. I've seen this one in real life, it just never looks good unless you have studio lights and you're under certain lighting. When you start walking outside in natural light, it just looks horrible. I don't want to use the word horrible. This is a huge trend on YouTube and I've never done that. I don't like it. I don't think that it looks good. Applying a shimmery highlighter on the brow bone here. It looks very impressive on camera and as the studio lights hit that shimmer, it looks nice. <laughs> but in real life, it just doesn't look good. If you want to highlight the brow bone, use a matte powder. Use just a pale bone color matte powder to highlight the brow bone. And same applies to using a very shimmery highlighter in the inner corner of the eyes. Make sure to use some highlighter that is more subtle with a satin finish in the inner corners of the eyes or keep the highlighting shade 
right at the center of the eyelid. It's going to look a lot more beautiful. Next, we're moving on to lips. Now for lipstick, you have to choose for yourself. I would advise you to go for a color that complements your skin tone. Try to stay away from this very nude nude colors, the ones that really literally blend with your skin tone. I think that those look incredibly aging and I know that these are very popular, especially when people are doing the smoky eye look. The lips are so pale, almost like you are sick and you've been sick for months. I really don't like that and this is not the French way. The French way, when French women wear a nude lipstick, they're usually going to wear a statement nude lipstick that is going to complement the skin tone. It's going to make you look a lot healthier um, and a lot better and it's somehow going to lit up your whole face. So make sure to stick to colors that complement your skin tone. Don't choose colors that are too pale just because you're following someone. I don't think that those look good and when you apply a very pale lipstick, I think that it always looks, it always makes people look older. Another tip that I have for you is stay away from metallic lipsticks. Metallic lipsticks are always going to emphasize all of the lines on the lips. Shantikai are doing for their limited edition collections, they are always going to do this kind of metallic lipsticks and they look very bad in real life. They are going to emphasize um, all of the lines on the lips and they just look so aging. They, they age the lips. I've seen this in real life and I just don't like the way it looks. It immediately makes even young people look so much older. I don't know why Shantikai insist on doing this kind of colors for limited editions. They are incredibly expensive and I think that it's a huge waste of money. So if you want a little bit of shine on the lips, as we age, lips are starting to lose volume. So just add a little bit of gloss. This is going to plump up the lips. It's going to make the lips look a lot more youthful. It's going to add hydration. I love glosses. I love adding a touch of gloss on top of a matte lipstick as well. It just makes the color look more alive, more beautiful but try to stay away from metallic lipsticks. Of course, if you like it and if this is your style and if you feel confident with that, then go ahead and do so. I'm just sharing what I think looks good and what I think doesn't look good. Moving on to the fashion part of this video and the so-called mistakes that make you look older and how to correct them. As we age, our body shape is going to change and we go through different periods in our life, especially women. Women are most often going to give birth, they're going to change the size of their clothes and over time, some people start to get comfortable wearing all oversized clothes. So I think that this is something that can make you look older, wearing everything oversized. Yes, I know that it's very comfortable and I know that you just don't have to think about it uh, but wearing everything oversized the top and the bottom I think is something that is going to make you look older it's going to make you look as if you're trying to hide something and why it's normal that our bodies are going to change it's normal that for most people they're not going to be able to fit in their clothes that they used to wear in their 20s. They are not going to suit them anymore in their 30s, 40s, 50s, etc. But there are so many gorgeous women that I find and see that they are afraid to show their body. I think that everyone has parts of their bodies that they love, whether it's going to be the arms or the legs or the shoulders or the waist. Just make sure to create a silhouette with your clothing and with your outfit. So if you're wearing and if you like to wear an oversized t-shirt or an oversized tunic, then go for a slim fit jeans or a slim fit pant. But if everything is too big, it just doesn't look good on most people and this can get very tricky. I see gorgeous women with beautiful bodies in their 70s, in their 80s, looking so stylish and so fashionable just wearing a big oversized t-shirt with skinny jeans or showing off their arms. And then there is one more thing that I want to share with you. You might not agree with this one because it is very American to wear sweatpants and this kind of hoodies. I really don't like hoodies. I never wear them except when I'm at home. I know that they're very comfortable. They are so cozy, so comfortable, but wearing it outside 
unless you are a teenager, it somehow makes you look not very elegant, let's say. This doesn't really age you, but it makes you look like, are you missing your youth? I don't know, I'll disregard this one. I know that some people here are going to say, why are you judging us for wearing hoodies? But I just don't like it. I don't like sweatpants, I don't like hoodies. Um, I just don't like this kind of a leisure clothing, I think is for wearing at home, at the gym, but outside it just looks so, it lacks style. For me, this is in my mind. This is what I have in my mind. Next, monochromatic looks. I feel very tempted usually to wear monochromatic looks and it's easy actually to go into this direction, especially if you're someone who is quite consistent and if you have a lot of black pieces in your wardrobe or beige pieces, neutral colors, it's very easy to go into this direction, but I think that monochromatic looks can make you look older. You have to add a touch of color somewhere. So let's say that you're wearing all black. I think that this is something that might age you, even though I'm a person that loves black and most of my clothes are black. And I can easily go into this direction where I'm going to dress all black, but I'm always going to add a pop of color, whether it's going to be jewelry, a scarf, a belt, or a coat with a different color, a handbag, shoes, something has to be in a different color. You need a pop of color. And if you actually take a closer look at the color wheel, you can very easily see what is going to be, what is going to suit and what is this touch of color that you need. I am planning to do a separate video and talk a little bit more about how to combine colors and how to combine different materials so that it looks elegant and good. So stay tuned for that and be sure to turn the notification bell on. I know from my previous video that a lot of you actually love navy blue color. It is a beautiful color. Very often it's going to complement um, most people's skin tone beautifully and it's going to be better than black and better than beige colors. However, if you wear only navy blue outfit, it's going to look dated, it's going to make you look a little bit older and you need a pop of color. Let's say a little bit of orange, why not? It fits beautifully with navy blue. It might not be that bright orange, it might be more muted, but usually orange and navy blue work very well together. Next, moving on to floral prints. Floral prints are beautiful, but they can be tricky. It's important to choose the right colors for you. And it's important to use floral prints with moderation. They don't suit very well to everyone. And sometimes they make, can make you look older. Instead, opt for some timeless color combinations or for some different geometric figures. I think that this might look better. Also, something that I don't like, even though it's recommended by a lot of fashion experts, is timeless pieces such as leopard. I usually don't like animal prints. For some reason, in my mind, animal prints make you look older. That's only for me, that's only my problem, but somehow when I see leopard prints or when I see any kind of animal print, in my mind, this looks very dated, it looks very old and it doesn't look flattering. Next, moving on to pastel colors and too many pastel colors, like wearing all pale pastel colors. These can bring a very youthful appearance, again, if used with moderation, but if you wear only pastel colors, it's usually going to make you look older. So you need something statement. If you wear, let's say, a pastel color blouse or a blazer, then opt for black jeans or black pants. This is going to complement the pastel colors beautifully. Another tip that I have for you is be careful with beige colors because beige colors can complement the skin tone beautifully. But at the same time, if you choose the wrong beige color, it, may, it can make you look pale. It can make you look almost sick. So when you're choosing a beige color, Think of your skin tone during the summer and during the winter and what is the piece that you're choosing. In my latest video, I talked about a trench coat being a statement piece and I mentioned beautiful beige colors and different varieties of beige colors. However, you always have to take into consideration your skin tone. So if you're choosing, for example, a beige color trench coat, you have to take into consideration your skin tone in the winter. And if you're choosing a beige color blouse or outfit for the spring, you have to take into consideration your spring slash summer skin tone. Otherwise, it may make you look pale, washed out and almost sick. 
And then the last tip that I have for you is wearing too much jewelry and too many accessories. There are people that love jewelry and who doesn't love jewelry actually? Beautiful jewelry can be the perfect accessory. However, if you add too many, it's going to age you and it's going to make you look older. So that was all for today's video. And one last tip that I have for you, whatever you decide to wear, be sure to wear it with confidence because you're beautiful inside and out. And don't forget to wear your smile as well because this is what is going to always make you look younger. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I truly appreciate it and I hope to see you in my next video. A bientôt!